So this is the Liano capture card or the Iliano or the Eliano. I don't know how you pronounce it because there's not a lot of review about this capture card. So I think it's, you know, kind of a hidden gem. It costs around 20 US dollars or 1,200 Philippine peso. And yeah, what you're seeing in the screen right now is the unboxing of it. So let me tell you how it feels. First of all, it's kind of like a thin aluminum with some plastic in there. It's not super light that you can flick it accidentally off your desk. It's not super heavy that if you stick it under your table, that it's going to randomly fall off. So yeah, that's actually what I did. And up to this point in time, it hasn't fell off yet. Now, let's talk about the inputs and outputs that it has. It has one HDMI in, one HDMI out, which is the pass-through. And then you got a headphone jack, a microphone jack, and also, of course, the USB out of it, uh, which will go to your capturing device. So yeah, that one is actually USB 3. So let's talk about the cables that it comes with because it actually does come with cables. So it comes with two very thick HDMI cables and also this really kind of braided thick and also good quality USB-C to USB-C slash USB-A port, which is extremely great because you have the versatility of, you know, if you want to plug it in by USB-C or USB-A on your capturing device. So now let me tell you my use case for the capture card. So I have my gaming PC and then I have my streaming PC. My streaming PC, of course, captures whatever is on the display of my gaming PC. So how I have it set up is that I have an HDMI from my graphics card on the gaming PC going into the HDMI in of the capture card. Now I have 185 hertz 1440p monitor, so I cannot just use the HDMI pass through. So what I did is I actually went to Windows, go into display settings, and actually duplicated my main monitor into the capture card. So yeah, that's just how it goes. I have the USB cable plugged into my secondary PC via USB-A because uh, I don't have a USB Type-C on my um, streaming PC. And then that's the way I capture it. Make sure, by the way, that you plug it into a USB 3.0 port, because if you don't, then you're just going to get 1080p 30 FPS. Here, let me show you. Let me actually hop onto my streaming PC and show you how it is on OBS. Hey, here we go. Phone view. So basically, this is OBS running on the secondary PC. And as you can see, I have the capture card right here. So I'll double click that. It's actually called the A320 device. And then on the resolution, I have it set on 1080p but you can actually set it to 1440p however if you set it at 1440p it will only do 30 fps but since you guys are probably buying this for game streaming you're probably gonna go ahead and set it to 1080p so we're gonna compare 1080p versus 1080p on you know capturing it on my main pc but yes on the 1080p you can do 60 fps on the video format yy2 which is the best format that you can do and i think it auto defaults to that and then the color range and color space are good and yeah that's how I just have it set up and now we're on the comparison part so I chose Apex Legends as kind of like the gaming benchmark type of thing to see the difference between capturing it from just the OBS and from the streaming PC um, because there's a lot of things going on as you can see there are some colors not just some but a lot of colors very vibrant colors there's some very light spots on the scenery and also some dark spots some lines some shapes a lot of texture a lot of different things even small motions from afar and also we have you know a lot of text as well on the screen so you can really see the difference between just having it being recorded on the gaming PC as a single PC setup and also through the capture card on the second PC. Just a reminder, there might be a little bit of a difference between the quality because the streaming PC is recording this or encoding it with a quick sync code encoder and then on my gaming PC, of course, I'm using the AMD encoder. So just letting you guys know about that. But both is set to 1080p 60fps at 10,000 bit rate. So yeah, you have no problems with that. But yeah, um, hopefully the capture card handles everything well because, you know, it's getting the clone mirrored from my display one, which is 185 hertz, 1440p. So you'll see if it's going to handle screen tearing well or will it have some screen tearing. The delay is not that noticeable, probably 0.5 to 0.7. 
uh, going to the preview of OBS itself. And um, yeah, milliseconds. You're not going to notice that. Your viewers won't notice that. And also the audio is a no problem to be synced on. But uh, yeah, I'm just moving around. We're just shooting randomly just so you can see the particles and fast movement. And uh, yeah, overall, I think the graphics card, or, sorry, overall, I think the capture card is doing a great job. So I guess I'll be ending the comparison part here. I think this $20 capture card does well for its price. Like, I don't think you can go wrong with it. It has a pass through. You also have the headphone jack and the mic. By the way, that headphone jack, it basically, whatever is being sent, you know, maybe if you're using the PlayStation 5, you put it, hook it up to the capture card. Instead of plugging in your headphones to the PS5 or your controller, you can just plug it in via the, you know, the capture card and you'll hear the game from there and also a microphone uh, sending it back to the PS5. And also the pass-through is kind of good. It doesn't have much delay, probably like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 um, milliseconds. But that is a little different when it comes to from your gaming PC to the streaming PC preview on OBS, probably around 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 milliseconds of delay. I don't have any scientific tools to check that. That's just how it feels. And it's not much of a problem, especially with audio syncing. Now, when it comes to the audio part, it's actually pretty easy to send over audio from gaming PC through your second PC with this capture card and actually in any capture cards. So don't be scared about that. I'm actually going to be making a video about that pretty soon. I guess right after this video, I'll be uploading it too. So don't you worry. Have that link in the description below how to set up audio from your PC to the second PC that you have. Now, when it comes to the quality, there might be a little difference in the quality itself because of OBS, because even though they're recorded in almost the same settings, the actual encoders are different. I'm using Intel Quick Sync on seventh generation Intel with the second PC here, and I'm using a full blown graphics card to encode it on the OBS on the gaming PC because I'm using an AMD RX 6700 XT. So there might be a little difference when it comes to the quality, but overall, I would say all good things to this capture card, except for one thing. This capture card, for my case at least, is a tad bit broken. The HDMI looping for the audio is actually not working fine. There's a little bit of buzz, hiss, noise, and not a lot of other people that I asked that has this graphics card through the store actually encountered that issue. So it's a defect on my end, and I wish I tested it first before I actually threw out the box because. That way I can RMA it, but now I cannot. So I'll be sticking with my way of doing audios, which I'll be making a video on, as I said. Anyway, that is it. Again, this is Alan, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.